Thanks, Michael. We've highlighted some of the, uh, the teaching points I'm going to make this afternoon just uh, with a couple of cases that uh, I've seen um, that have actually had surgical closure, which unfortunately hasn't provided the patient with an optimal benefit. And um, I think largely, as you suggested, there's a, um, a propensity for uh, surgeons to believe that the technique they use is the only technique that works and that they're not really certain whether it does or not because the patients generally aren't followed up by them. Uh, and, uh, and getting the patients back from surgery who have got recurrent AF and needing cardioversion uh, going for toe, some of the appendages have not been successfully closed. So, um, so you know, technique and agreement of technique and what's most effective is wide and variable amongst our surgical colleagues. So we know that the hypothesis, as uh, Michael quite rightly pointed out, is that closing the appendage uh, will reduce the stroke risk. And we know that percutaneous closure has actually been demonstrated as a safe and effective way of reducing stroke uh, in patients with non-valvular AF. And that's predominantly thanks to the Watchman device uh, that have uh, followed patients for many years now uh, and shown procedural safety. Closing the left atrial appendage reduces the stroke without need for anticoagulation in surgical data has not supported an overall benefit. And obviously individual experiences vary, but on the whole the, the area is poorly researched and there's not a, a lot of convincing data that it's a, that it's a consistently successful technique as has been described by Michael. Um, so we've got variable uh, techniques from excision and oversew to suture to stable or clip ligation, but the rates of complete ligation would uh, in uh, previous studies were generally low. So this particular um, uh, early study that uh, looked at 12, it was only 12 patients, um, and they basically found that uh, when they actually ligated the left atrial appendage, that post ligation, they reduced the size of the appendage, but not necessarily uh, occluded it completely. And that cardiac gated CT in follow up demonstrated that only 75% of that 75% of patients still had communication of contrast dye into the left atrial appendage using this technique. And you can see this is the kind of example from a post ligation. I'll show you a, a case that we went on to close later on. Uh, this is another study that was published in 2005 looking at 77 patients at the time of bypass and when sutures were used or a stapler, again different techniques, different people, different centres, um, there was the actual complete closure rate was actually low in these patients. So, um, so let, a complete occlusion was only achieved in 45% of cases using sutures and 72% of uh, patients using a stapler. But if you're going to take the left atrial appendage off or you're going to ligate it surgically, you want it gone, you want it 100%. Uh, there's also this registry, the LAOS 3 trial, which I believe has stopped recruiting and they're looking at uh, follow-up outcomes and the expected completion for that follow-up period is 2020. One of our local hospitals in Brisbane has actually been part of that, the PA hospital, and this is patients undergoing cardiac surgery for other reasons and randomising them to left atrial appendage excision or not. Again, the techniques that were used for that, for that uh, data collection have actually been variable um, and that might be revealing in terms of a successful type of procedure versus ones that aren't so successful. So this is a cardiac CT reconstruction of the left atrium and the left atrial appendage and you can see there off to the right, there's the appendage just hanging off the lateral aspect of the mitral annulus, there's the mitral annulus in the green circle there and you can see this one's kind of funky, it's got a bit of a tail uh, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite, uh, quite an interesting shape. When we excise the left atrium surgically, this is what it should look like. So it should actually be in the plane of the left atrium, there should be no residual tissue, no pockets and no recanalisation. So this is an example of what the CT reconstruction looks like when it's been completely excised successfully. And this is what it looks like on toe when you've actually got rid of uh, that uh, left atrial appendage with no residual pocket and as you can see a smooth lined endothelium that actually uh, goes from the mitral annulus to the limbus. This is uh, a CT reconstruction of a case that actually had incomplete closure and this patient actually came back to us because they'd actually had another embolic stroke uh, from their atrial fibrillation and uh, we decided to, uh, to have a look into this. Uh, we thought that the left atrial appendage had been closed but then we discovered on subsequent imaging that this was not the case and possibly the substrate for their, uh, for their embolic event. And you can see here that this is post ligation and you can see that there is a narrow neck or recanalisation at the base of the appendage, uh, again just in that territory of the left uh, circumflex coronary artery that we talked about earlier. And, uh, and you've got flow in and out 
lamina flow in and out of that appendage. So we decided to close this residual defect and uh, this patient underwent closure, not with any of the devices that are commonly used for uh, left atrial appendage closure, but because of the nature and the shape of the, of the defect, we actually used a PDA closure device for this one. So we basically measured it up. It was four millimetres circular. We uh, put the guide wire across there and deployed the PDA device there and there was no residual flow there and the left atrial appendage was now able to be excluded from the circulation. So that's one example. Um, this is another case of a mechanical mitral valve and surgical left atrial appendage excision. Uh, the patient came back with post-operative AF for cardioversion and was referred for a TOE uh, to guide the cardioversion. Now, if, this, if the left atrial appendage has been excised, why would we need a toe? Um, in this particular patient, the, um, the warfarin uh, for the mechanical mitral valve replacement had been subtherapeutic prior to the, prior to the uh, cardioversion. And so the TOE was literally uh, to, see, to make sure that the valve was actually functioning normally. But when they actually looked at, the, um, looked at the appendage, it was clearly very patent. And so it doesn't look like this has been intervened with at all. Fortunately, the patient was on warfarin, and you might argue, well, why do you need to excise the left atrial appendage if you're going to be on chronic warfarin uh, therapy? And that's a question for the treating team, not for me. But, um, but we were able to demonstrate that this appendage, um, despite the fact that the surgeon uh, made in the notes that the left atrial appendage was excised with a linear cutting stapler and a small amount of bioglue was applied to the staple line, it simply was ineffective in this patient. <coughs> So, uh, closing the left atrial appendage will reduce the stroke risk without the need for anticoagulation. We know that the cardiac, data, uh, the cardiac surgical data is not supported in overall benefit, and obviously there are clear reasons why that's the case. Ongoing research and data collection in cardiac surgical patients is required, along with surgical techniques which are consistently more effective and widely adopted by our surgical colleagues as the standard of care. Thank you.